send them in. Here's my email. Send them to me, and so. I'm ready. I did that on Here Friday. Here we go. I'd like to welcome everyone to uh, our meeting uh, this week. And with that, uh, I'd entertain a motion to suspend the rules. It's moved. Second. All right. Moved by uh, Mr. Lawrence, seconded by Mr. Barrett. Any discussion? All in favor? Those opposed, motion carries that the clerk would uh, read the additions. To the policy agenda, we're substituting, excuse me, 4B, ordinance to authorize a PDHB plan development hospitality for 1252 and 1254 Beach Boulevard. To the consent agenda, we're adding a resolution to repair the Nature's Trail subdivision detention pond, adding 5C, a resolution authorizing settlement by Jimmy Williams, adding 5D, resolution amending the budget for the police department. Thank you. Uh, move the agenda as amended. All right. We have a motion by Mr. Lawrence, second by Mr. Gines. Any discussion? All in favor? Those opposed? Motion carries. Mayor's report. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, welcome to the second meeting in June. And that concludes my report. Thank you. There being no department reports, we'll move on to council reports. Mr. Lawrence. Yeah, we had a great weekend with the Bill Fish Tournament. They had a two-hour show on CBS about Biloxi and the Bill Fish Tournament. Could not beat that. Great coverage. So anytime we have an, uh, an event like that with that many boats, they had 73 boats, 71 of them was out-of-town boats, two local boats. Machat was one of the local boats. Yeah, so, and, and Diaz was the other one. They had, it was huge. They give away about a million and a half. That's a whole Trump chain. The guy cost him 17000 to fill up for the few, and he won 600 He said he's almost even because he got to go back home. He said he won 600000 for his largest fish. But he said, maybe I'll get enough money so I could fill up again on the way back. 17000 just to fill up the boat. So they didn't run back and forth like they normally did. The second thing, I've had several phone calls, uh, Mayor. When are we planning on cutting uh, the ribbon for the walkway and going a lot to, on the back? Are we finished completely now with the walkway on Bayview? We did it today. Ten o'clock. I said we were talking Bayview about naming board. after Gwen Glott. I said, have you set up a time to the Bayview board ribbon, ribbon, ribbon cutting was today. Say again. The Bayview if you're asking about the Bayview uh, boardwalk ribbon cutting. Ooh, yeah. That was today at ten. What is it? Today it was it happened today at ten o'clock. This morning at ten o'clock. Well they they, they uh, you know, I think the two of you councilmen were here, uh, were there, and, and spoke. No. I'm, I'm not sure how the communications went. It was on B News also. Well, that's terrible because all the people on Kitchen didn't want to be there. <laughs> I mean, I had no clue. When was that put out? That was well, the day. We'll, we'll double check, but I think, you know, you might ask your councilman how they were aware. I know it was on B News, and we, uh, you know, we, we, we put the word out. There was a good ribbon cutting. All the, a lot of folks were there to. Uh, I, I, I wasn't informed of that at all. Well, snacks no. weren't really very good. <laughs> Say again. It, it was okay to miss. The snacks weren't really very good. Hot though. What happened? To, okay, quite there. What did you say? The snacks weren't very good. No, no, I'm just kidding. He was just I'm kidding. Just snacks. kidding. I mean, we worked hard enough for a lot of years, and not to be able to be there. That's uh, that's pretty upsetting. Well, we did a lot of stuff with that, you know, so I don't know how was, the council wasn't informed. The people, I don't know. I mean, it should have been somewhere. Never heard the first thing about that. Well, I'll, I'll on, check them you know, where, where we mean, were. You know, but I mean, that's uh, pretty disheartening. Thank you. Mr. Garns. Yeah, just uh, wanted to remind everybody that uh, this weekend, Juneteenth, uh, the weekend, we're having a big Juneteenth celebration this weekend in Hen John Henry Beck Park. Uh, lots of fun games for the kids and also a unity walk slash uh, 5K run. That concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gines. Ms. Newman? Mr. Deming? 
Welcome back, Mr. Tisdale. Thank you. I, uh, I wanted to compliment Public Works. There was a, a dip in the road on the bees at the west end of Fernwood Road, and uh, they got on it really quick, so I appreciate that. On the westbound lane of Pass Road, on either side of the uh, Eisenhower Pass Road intersection, that's a westbound lane, there's still just a couple of dips, dimples or whatever that have had asphalt in them previously, but there's still low spots and the westbound, right? Right, the westbound lane. So if, if we could do that like we did to bees, that'd be terrific. Uh, also, we have a number of tree stumps, I know, in Westview Park and in Pennzoil Park. I don't know if there are others, and these are from past storms or uh, hurricanes now for the last 18 months, but it'd be great if we could oh. Stumps. I mean, they've cut cut the trees down that were blown over. They just need to get rid of the stumps. Some of them are probably uh, okay. 16, 18 inches in diameter. Some of them may be a couple of feet, particularly in Pennzoil Park. But it'd be great if we could get on that. And uh, let's see. Do we have or do we have a specific date yet from Keesler? Have we heard when they're going to open that gate, and that's where all their traffic will be coming through? I meant to make this uh, part of Mayor's report, but thank you for asking. Uh, Keesler is very anxious to get the gate open and see how it's working. Where they are going to open the gate starting Saturday, this coming Saturday, eight o'clock in the morning. The only the only thing that they're going to tweak from the uh, the ultimate uh, final traffic plan is the uh, the big trucks are going to continue to go in the Bayview Gate, but they're going to exit the base through. The new gate. Okay. Cars and small vehicles will be able to go in and out of the, of the uh, new gate, but the trucks are going to go in the Bayview gate and out the. Uh, so they they're going to and they're going to turn and go up um, Benaki, Benaki to the back bay, and then and on to I-110. I think the inspection facility where we had the ribbon cutting there right. is not uh, total you know inspection uh, ready yet. So they're going to go exactly. to the back. And does, does that mean that White Avenue now, because it's closed, they still have the visitor center there at White Avenue, but I would assume they may still have that there. I don't know if they're done with the, the new visitor center. would be outside the gate, so it'll be interesting. Until they get their uh, visitor center ready on, off of Division Street, they'll That's still ready to go. So contract, we, contract services also. All right, so White Avenue won't, the White Avenue gate won't be used at all? Uh, I don't don't know the answer to that. Probably to 830, you know, it'll be open right now, but it may be, you know, exit they're, traffic they're, at 4 o'clock. Yeah. Keesler is still keeping their odds, uh, their options oh. open on, on the White. They may do use it for uh, just busy, busy times and so forth. The, the, what I just announced was just decided yesterday afternoon late, and uh, our public okay. affairs people are putting it out to the city, the, the, new, okay. the new traffic plan starting oh. Saturday. We'll have to change all the signage at um, the Meadows Gate first thing Saturday morning. Also, I was uh, down Forest Avenue there, the roundabout, and down Division from Forest uh, East, and then uh, north and south of the roundabout, the, all the lights are out. I know they're working on the lights, I, I think, aren't and they? The still? lights for the whole entire street all the way back to I-110 are on order. Okay, but north and south on Forest, some of those were no, are no, out no. too. That's so Anyway, I'm just mentioning that. It's mighty dark mm -hmm. right there. Um, but that's all I have at this time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Tisdale. Mr. Barrett? <laughs> I have a couple of things. Uh, first, I'd like to echo what George said. Went to the Billfish Classic on Saturday, and not only did they have some amazing fish, uh, great crowd. And when I left, uh, there was a, a wreck on 90, so I came through downtown. And to see the foot traffic downtown on the weekend, middle of summer, hot like it was, it was just crowded all the way from Main Street down Howard, um, down Howard um, past Calvet. So it was... Um, Good to see that kind of foot traffic, um, people active downtown. Um, second thing is, Mike, I sent you and the mayor and um, Jerry and a couple of others a list of, of some things. Um, I think there's 40 something items on that list. Uh, some of them are new. Some of these things um, have been brought up multiple times. Um, for instance, Shorecrest Road between the sewer plant and the bridge. 
I would venture to say that that's probably the worst road that's paved in our city. And, um, and we, we need to get that road widened and paved as soon as possible. We're gonna end up with a, a terrible wreck on that road at nighttime. It's just not wide enough. There's bumps in the road that throw you. And so if you're passing another vehicle and you hit the bump wrong, it could throw you into another vehicle. It's just not big enough. And I know that we had the, <clears throat> the water sewer issue, um, but that doesn't affect that because water and sewer is already run south of the power plant or the um, sewer plant. It's just not running to the north. And the worst part of that road is um, south between the bridge and the and the sewer plant. So um, that, as well as a, a few other things like the the bushes and the trees on the corner of Boyette, um, I've had multiple multiple complaints. That's something that I know that uh, Miguez has came to you several times on as well. Um, those need to be cleared. It, it's it'll be a quick, easy fix. Um, but again, with the, the the amount of traffic that we have on Shorecrest Road, people trying to come out and people go faster than they're supposed to on that road, we need to get that corner cleared. And I think Thursday we have a, a, a subdivision that's coming forward um, for the in front of the planning commission to go, you know, 50 something homes and you add all that other traffic. Um, you know, we have to get that road and taken care of. Um, but if you need anything from me on that, um, there's things on there, and I've talked to Jerry already, I've talked to Mike Hosley, um, that, that are code issues, it's not all public works. Um, some of them are people that have requested lights, um, things like that, so if we can just take a look at that list and anything I can do to help on my end to get that going, I appreciate it, and that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. Mr. Lawrence? You know, a couple of things. Um, on the gate, I thought we built the Division Street gate in about the neighborhood. That's the plan. Bayview. So what are, what are we wasted millions of dollars putting they still using the gate Wait, going to the back one in Kensington. The the deal with the, the trucks, they're inspected on the bay right now. The inspection where we had the that the whole to to contain any kind of blast and X ray is not ready yet. So they're not ready to to X ray to accept those big trucks at this point in time at that spot. All right, so they will close the gate. Yeah, oh yeah. They'll close that back bay that, that, right behind the hospital. Well, that was the old yeah. idea of doing all this. So get yeah, well, they, they're not it. ready yet. You know, the, the building is, is built pretty, it looks like a metal building, but it's um, you know, reinforced all kinds of ways to, to uh, uh, retain problems if they have problems, but it's not ready yet. Okay. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. And the other thing is, what have you done about the pickleball? Have but what? Fought the pickleball. Have we moved forward to do anything that we're supposed to be doing? We told them people we're doing. So what are we doing? What are we doing? Was we put into in, in the bond issue? We allocated two hundred thousand dollars to do some things right there. The, the pavilion, bathrooms, and stuff like that. Uh, right now, the last estimate used to be seventy-six thousand. That's one hundred eighteen thousand dollars plus whatever we need for some shaded area. That was the latest and greatest that uh, we're trying to price out. That is in part of that bond issue that was passed. Okay. And uh, your timing is everything. You know what it would cost us if we tried to do that, that, that bond issue today. And are we also going to build maybe a dozen courts more? No, no courts on this, in this go around. This is the pavilion and uh, uh, some shade street. Uh, we, uh, to do, you know, I think it was about a million, no, excuse me, how much was it? Uh, $100,000 to do the pickleball court in, in uh, Eagle Point. Now, was it like a hundred thousand to do that on the courts? I believe the um, the two courts, if if I remember correctly, are in between seventy and eighty. Yeah. Not counting the equipment, but just the the um, the, the the groundwork, the paving and striping the, and all that. The, the long game is to get twelve more in place, alongside where they are right now on Pops Ferry. So, but it won't be in in, in this issue. We're going to allocate two hundred thousand dollars to get as much as we can. If we can get two extra courts, we'll be. If all you're right. talking about the pickleball court, the pickleball, pickleball court was twenty four thousand for one court. Yeah, well, but basically, we you know our estimate now is, is you know is, is about a hundred thousand for two courts, right? Oh, well. Councilman Barrett on, on Eagle Point. <laughs> I think I shared with you the predicament we have with our paving contractors. Yes, you, you did. We've uh, we've found two contractors that were willing to bid it separately. We've gotten the two bids. One of the two is under fifty thousand. So the mayor signed an executive uh, exemption from uh, bidding that from that out, and we're issuing a PO this week to uh, a company okay. that's going to pay, pave that parking lot. 
Good deal. Well, right. Councilman, we Lawrence. To... Councilman Lawrence, you still have the floor. You got anything else? Uh, just one thing I'd like to, uh, I failed to mention a while ago, welcome all our neighbors back again. Y'all kind of become like extended council people. Mm -hmm. I'm making all these meetings. Y'all been in more meetings than most people. This is about the 10th one. Glad to have y'all again. Thank y'all for coming. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, the only thing I want to say, thank you to the administration to continue to work with uh, some drainage issues in Hinge in Place and uh, Destiny uh, Plantation had an issue and I, I, I saw the email correspondence, somebody's going out there to assess it. Appreciate y'all uh, working diligently to kind of fix some of these issues. Um, I do want to recognize the ribbon cutting today. It's a shame that uh, Councilman Lawrence uh, wasn't able to attend and didn't get the information, but it was a it was a good ribbon cutting. The snacks were okay, but um, <laughs> you know, as we upgrade uh, these different areas, it, it's it's just really good for the citizens. Not only does it provide a storm water protection, it creates a livable uh, you know estuary uh, area that people could uh, enjoy, and then the recreational component is is just beautiful. So. Uh, that was a good thing. Uh, that concludes my report. Uh, we'll move on to citizens' comments. We have a total allotted time of 45 minutes. Uh, when you're called, when you raise your hand and you're recognized, come up to the front, sign in your name legibly, uh, your, your name and your address, and then state it for the record clearly. Talk on any subject that you want for three minutes. Uh, once your time is up, you'll he hear the bell. Your time will be over. So we'll go ahead and start on my left, your right. Raise your hand to be recognized if you want to come up and speak. Over here, no one. We'll go to my right, your left. David Wilhelm, 185 Main Street. Um, here on behalf of Harrison County Lodging Development on, uh, I think, item four. B or 4A on your agenda today. Uh, available to answer any questions you may have. Just wanted to uh, point out, and I think the clerk's already given y'all copies of the letter from uh, Matthew McDade, uh, who had appeared last week at the hearing, uh, and we have uh, uh, agreed with the uh, objectors, and we've worked everything out with them, and that's basically what his letter says, and the amended plan that you have in your packet before you uh, encompasses all of that stuff, some minor tweaks that they wanted, uh, and our uh, private agreement with them uh, will probably be finalized this week or early next week. So, uh. All right. Thank you, Mr. Wheeler. All right. Anyone else on my right, your left? Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Neil Poland with Dell Partners Architects, 161 Lemuse Street. Um, a question was brought to my attention earlier today regarding the change in square footage on the Harrison County Lodging uh, Development Project that Mr. Wheeler was just speaking of. Um, the square footage that is shown on the map amendment you guys have is accurate. Uh, there was a question about how that compared to a previous version that showed fewer hotel rooms. So I just wanted to provide a clarification there. Um, the updated uh, map amendment that is current with you all includes the square footage of the proposed additional eight hotel rooms, but it also includes the square footage of all of the amenity, courtyard, exterior balconies, exterior corridors, um, and that, that was not uh, included when the original map amendment was submitted. Um, as you guys have seen in the renderings and the plans, this is a, a unique hotel concept where a lot of the exterior spaces are very much part of the design itself. Uh, and so when we resubmitted, we thought it was appropriate to include those numbers as well. Uh, but I, I failed to notify Gerald of that. And so that's why there may have been a, a question there. So, uh, but the, 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 the vision, the, the renderings that you guys have seen, it's all very much accurate, very much intact. Uh, the only exception being the additional eight rooms uh, that, the, uh, that we were requesting in the, in the revised uh, application. Thank you, sir. What a question. Uh, it's not a question and answer. We get to it when we get to the item on the square foot. There's no no questions and answer. Anyone else on my right, your left? Anyone in the back of the room? I'll get to you in a minute. Someone has it. 
God can't give us another opportunity. I'm going to go ahead and read this. Members of the council, I've been a part of multiple meetings and discussions with regards to the proposed hotel developments within the Father Ryan neighborhood. What I have observed that this project is being fast-tracked, frequently circumventing the rules that the city has put in place to protect the essence of the city and its citizens. What I have not witnessed is an explanation as to why this is being done. What is the immediate need of experimenting with a new commercial-based zoning change in a residential neighborhood? Why must we have a PDHB in this residential neighborhood or any residential neighborhood? There have been statements made there is a hotel room shortage in, this, in our city. However, no data has been shared to answer basic questions such as how often a hotel is at full capacity, whether the number of tourists is growing, shrinking, or flat, and most importantly, how building a low-end hotel in the middle of a residential neighborhood without a proper plan in place contributes to the future growth of our city when there is an overabundance of commercial beachfront property available for, for development. As a footnote to that, there have been exactly about seven to eight versions of this thing in the last four, in the last week, we've had about four. So it, it's constantly changing. The residents of Father Ryan gain nothing from this endeavor. In fact, they have the most to lose as this proposed development change to this, the very nature of their home. I ask what are Mr. Blessing and Mr. Creel gaining from proposing and aggressively pushing this deal through? What are you, the Bluxy City Council, elected by the citizens of Bluxy for the purpose of representing our needs and interests, gaining by blindly supporting such half-baked plan when they come with no data to back them up? I implore you to consider decisions being made here and the repercussions they have on the residents of our city while you work to build a better future for the city of Bluxy. Thank you. I'm going to continue. Anyone else on my right, your left? All right. Anyone in the back of the room? Mr. Kavanaugh? Uh, Michael Kavanaugh, 134 St. Jude Street. Um, I just wanted to uh, reiterate uh, we do have, you do have a supplement to the master plan before you. Uh, which um, does make a number of improvements and concessions on that. There are two other items that uh, are associated with covenants that are not in the master plan and won't be before the city, but we reserve the right to appeal and are with, uh, in uh, anticipation of those hopefully being approved, then we will not be appealing, but those two other issues are on the table with the developers now and we're working toward a resolution but uh, just an FYI that we do uh, want to make the make sure those are resolved before we move forward thank you anyone else that I may have missed in the room that would like to speak there being no one uh, public comments is now closed We'll move on to the policy agenda, <clears throat> item A. Ordinance to authorize the plan development hospitality business overlay district a master plan for 1252 and 1254 Beach Boulevard. This was moved by Mr. Deming and seconded by Mr. Gines. Mr. Deming. Yep. Jerry, can you? Help me out with understanding. I know we had some concerns with this PDHB zoning, and, and the way it's written is that there are so many allowances that are um, undesirable under the PDHB standard, but that's only what, and correct me if I'm wrong, that's only what's allowed to be used for the PDHB, but once the PDHB is created, if the uses in the PDHB are the only uses that property can be um, used for correct. That's correct. There are a number of uses that are listed as accessory uses in the use table and actually without realizing it the the uh, resident that stood up and asked the question and you asked the question Why not just do a straight zoning change on this instead of in the PD? 
Well, if you do a straight zoning change and change it to CB, you have opened the door for all of those uses. So B is actually what protects the neighborhood because the, the ordinance says the PD governs and the uses that are in the narrative with the PD are what they're allowed to build. If they come in and try to do a gas station there, no, you can't do that. If they come in and try to do a nightclub there, you can't do that because it's not included in the master plan and the narrative of the PD. And, and regarding specifically in the drawn PD for that property, not the general rules of the PD, right? So in the, in the, in the, 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 I think the concern and the confusion is that when you look up the, the um, PDHB, and all the things that you can get one for, there's a lot of allowances, right? A lot of different things you can yep. use it for. There but is once, accessory uses, yes. Right, but this limits all those accessory uses to whatever we put in this PDHB. And That's whatever correct. Is, whatever is, whatever the PDHB is designed for is the only thing the property can be used for. That's correct. Um, secondly, another concern was the, the back portion and why it had to be included in the PDHB. And so what I understand is the back portion has to be included in the PDHB because you need a minimum of three acres to qualify for a PDHB. And so what we've done to make sure that the residents are protected from, from um, undesirable uses is added a bunch of encumbrances into that back area. That's correct. When they come forward with phase two, if they come forward with anything that is outside the scope of the RM20 zoning that's there, then uh, it won't move forward. <laughs> All right. Um, I, may I reserve the right to ask some more questions, but sure. at the moment I'll concede and allow someone I'll move else. to Mr. Gons, who seconded it. Do you have any questions, Mr. Gons? Yeah, I think uh, Councilman Demon just about covered everything, uh, and that was my biggest concern. My biggest concern was anything beyond the, the, the hotel uh, or where we projected to have the second hotel at. Now, that's uh, RM20. Would that remain RM20 from here on out? It, it remains RM20. It remains RM20 uses. It's under the scope of the, the PDHB. But they've put this covenant in there, this statement in there on the PD that says that they're going to restrict that property to RM20 uses, and they will not be asking for any variances or any exceptions there. So, but because that's a part of the three acre PD, that language governs. And if they change anything or if they try to change anything, then they'll have to come back through the planning commission and through the city council. So anything outside the scope of RM20 would be not allowed? On phase two, yes, sir. On phase two. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. Lawrence, question. Uh, the PDHB did not restrict them. They wanted that for flexibility. So half what you're saying and telling them is, is half true. And all that about a gas station, it was never about a gas station. And there's a ton of things that PDHB, once you do this, is permitted. And they could put those in there. And how you stop that, you can't. So the flexibility for them to do it, they want inside this project is there once you put the PDHB on it. Otherwise, they wouldn't be asked for that. Mm -hmm. They'd have to come back and ask for community business. You know, so you can say what you want is restricted. It does not. Yeah. The flexibility, and they said that themselves at the meeting, the reason they want the PDHB, flexibility. Mm -hmm. So you got to tell them the whole truth. Here. We just can't be sent, setting up things what they want and what you want them to hear. Tell them all what it is. Tell them all what's in that PDHB, what they can do, setbacks stuff. There's a lot of things eliminated when you do PDHB. Mm -hmm. So in that. And a plan development is supposed to have a plan for the phase two in this drawing. It's not. And that's your home rule. That's the rule you have of the city. Well, I'm not going to argue with you. What the rule says is that they have up to two years to provide that PDHB on phase two. And if after that they don't provide that, then the, it charges me with going back and, and removing the PDHB. Now, they're going to start on this phase one immediately. But at the same time, they're going to be developing the plan for phase two. So well, let me ask you a question. Then. If they don't do anything in two years, we're going to tear this hotel down and building? No. Nope. Because then it's not permitted. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do then? So that's one of those statements mm -hmm. you're making, mm -hmm. that way you leave the door wide open. If it's not permitted, 
and it's built, then you got to tear it down if it don't fit in that neighborhood. Well, and we've done that before with garages and people's yards and stuff like that. In there, okay. you don't get all upset. That's your well, job. To say no, I'm not getting upset, questions. Mr. Lawrence, but I tried to no, explain this at the last meeting, and you obviously weren't listening. Yeah. Is it? This is a way that we do major projects all the time. These PD projects come in, and they will have phase one designed. They don't know exactly what they're going to do on phase two or phase three. The casinos are a PD. Margaritaville is a PD. We have another case today that's a PD. And when they come in, we know what we're going to do in phase one, but we've got to get phase one done to generate some revenue so that we can then design phase two the way that we've agreed to design it. So this is nothing new. It's happened many times before. And uh, I, I thought I'd done a pretty good job of explaining it last week, but. Well, you did. That's why I'm asking this question, because also in the plan development, you suppose they have a plan for the second phase. You like that's in the laws we have. So when you're planning everything, you did. So that's why I'm asking this question. There's nothing but a, maybe apartments, proposed apartments. Nothing in concrete about anything. So I mean, if they're planning on doing apartments, you can have a layout for the apartments. That's your job, sir, to do that. That's what the plan development states. That's what we state. You must have these plans in place. Well, the yeah, language, phase the language might happen you later. The language that you have in your packet today is going to be the governing authority over what moves forward. The master plan and narrative and the supplement that they've submitted to you today, that's what's going to rule on this. So. Thank you. Anyone else have anything to add? Yeah, I do. Go ahead, let Nathan roll. I don't have a, a question. I do have a comment. Um, a little bit over a month ago, I met with several of the residents out on the site, and um, at that point, it was still um, having the parking lot between the two homes, the extended stay um, motel or, or whatever. Um, and at that time, you know, the, the, that was the two big concerns. And as long, I'm, I'm going to support this going forward. Um, I will make a motion that we include this supplement into the language of or, or into the resolution that we're um, passing. Um, but everything that had been asked originally by the residents has been done. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> I don't feel in any way that this impedes um, and, and is going to have a negative impact. Originally, mm -hmm. I was a no on this project because of the parking lot and, and the, the short term or the long term rental right next to property lines. But there's the distance that's created now by eliminating that. The RM20 is already there. So whatever these guys de decide to do is going to be governed by RM20. And they don't even have to do anything to do that now. All they have to do is get the plans approved through the planning commission. So the only thing that's really changing from what's in place right now is a hotel is going to be built on the beach right across White Avenue from another hotel. That's and right. so um, I, I will support this. I feel that, that all the, the needs and the concerns, especially of the immediate neighbors, um, ha, have been addressed that would have been affected by this. So I'll support it going forward. Mr. Barrett, can I ask that you reserve your amendment until we have everybody have a chance to speak? All right, Council. And let me, let me point out. The supplement is already a part of the. That's, that's what I was going to point out. Yes. Okay. 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 That supplement he's talking about was in the substituted uh, resolution that <clears throat> came out this morning. If, hmm. if Mr. Barrett's comfortable with that, I will draw my. Okay. Okay. My. Uh, Mr. Tisdale. Uh, Jerry, did I understand you? And this may have been some weeks ago. That if if this project doesn't begin, <laughs> is it within two years? Then the. Uh, the plan development disappears and it reverts to the, the underlying zoning. Is that yes, correct? Sir. This is what makes it the difference between a zoning change and an overlay district. With a zoning change, you make that decision based on changing the character of the neighborhood, mistaking the original zoning, which is what state law requires. And when you change that zoning, it's changed. You can't do anything back. With an overlay district, you can place an overlay district over underlying zoning. And the ordinance uh, 
requires me, if they don't start the project at all, if they don't start it, then after two years, I can remove it. Well, with that charge in there, if I were to have to go back and remove a zoning change, let's say that it was a zoning change, if I went back in and had to remove that, that would be an acknowledgement that we had not followed the law, that we had changed that zoning for some other reason. It would be contract zoning, which is illegal. You cannot rezone property and say, <clears throat> we're gonna rezone this to allow this one project on it, but if it doesn't move forward, we're gonna take that zoning back. That's called contract zoning. It's not legal, you can't do that. So the, the next question would be, at what point does that two year limitation, if you will, when does that begin to run? It would run from the date that the mayor signs the approval, if that's what happens today. If the council approves it, the clock starts ticking then. Mr. Barry, you had something you wanted to add? I just have a statement. And um, another place that we did this was, it's in Kenny's ward now, but on the corner of Lick Skillet and 15. Dennis Stifel came before us to get a PDHP in place so that they could do a study instead of doing a zoning change. Well, they got into the study and they saw that they weren't gonna be able to do this subdivision. So we're probably about six to eight months in, but at two years that will roll back to the, or that, that PDHP, that overlay will be removed and it'll it'll revert to its original zoning because nothing's gonna go forward well, it was a, at it, that. It was actually a PDR, it was a PD okay. residential. Uh, but the fact that they withdrew that application, that's already ended. Okay. They've already given us documents. But that is, that's the same type deal where it's a two-year deal that you have to be able to to do the... That's correct, okay. yes. All right. Thank you, Mr. Baird. Anyone else would like to be recognized? I'd like to say one thing. I, I can't support this because I don't support any bad ideas, and this is a bad idea. And you can say what you want and check it all you want. Six different changes. On a meeting, we got right now May 31st, June 6th, June 9th, June 14th, in the Planning Commission, two at the DARC. All these meetings and change, 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 change. I expect they're going to keep up with that. They live there. Well, they live in that point. neighborhood, and it, for the last four months, you have drove these poor people crazy. Okay, let me let me answer that. Yeah, please. Think about think about the changes that have been presented to you. All of these changes have been presented as a result of the request from the neighbors that they did not want a connector going out onto Father Ryan. So that lot has been removed. The other thing had to do with uh, the uh, uses on the property. Every change that this developer has made has come as a result of something that came up at one of the meetings where the neighbors didn't want this or they wanted this to change. So it's all been a reduction according to it. Very, very seldom do you ever work with a developer that has been this sensitive to uh, items that the neighbors have, have brought up. So it's not that they were changing it to increase the intensity or to make it more restrictive or whatever. They've done these to accommodate the request of the neighbors. Yeah, they did that because they was about to lose this whole deal. That's why they did it. It wasn't they were sensitive to the neighborhood. They were beating up the neighborhood. <clears throat> That's what you were doing, and they still do that. And they still have to live there. They have to live within this area, whatever y'all come up with, and make these deals work, they don't work. But they live there. That's their neighborhood. Been there 127 years, family residence. You know, yet we beating up these neighbors when we got three miles up Highway 90 that sits there undeveloped. But y'all worrying about this little neighborhood to destroy it. Uh, make them change to the where they live. Everything they done. So now yeah, he's sensitive to why? To make money. He run a low end hotel and he's trying to put it in a high end neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. Anyone else? Mr. Creel, I think we've established that there are far more protections for the surrounding neighborhood okay. using this PDHB. <coughs> um, Matt McDade presented um, a statement in opposition last week. I think there were some objections that were filed with the city. Um, they withdrew those objections, but left 
a, a supplement to amend the master plan, and there are a few items that they that they have issues with. One um, that I wanted to ask you about is the dumpster site. I know in this plan, we've the developers have worked with us to move the dumpster from being next to a, a residential building in the old designed um, phase two that no longer exists. Mm -hmm. Do we have any protections to prevent dumpsters from being on the back of neighbors' fences? Well, uh, let's address the issue here. The site plan that's in your package shows the dumpster being over on the uh, east side of the property line now. So they did, they did actually move that, and you have a revised site plan to show that, and they've actually made a statement to that effect in the supplement that's been presented to you. Um, it, it does, but that doesn't address phase two and a potential. Phase two comes forward. It's going to have to go through the planning commission and through the city council, just like this one did. Okay. So we can address that at that time. But right now, we haven't anything that's been okay. Presented. So we can address that yes, issue as it comes up. Thank you. That's that's all I was concerned with, Mr. Tisdale. Just in looking back at and where we are at this point and where we started, there's there's something that rattles around in my head other than the loose screw that some people point out from time to time. But as I recall, there's something in there that says to about developers basically as a, maybe not as a courtesy, but meeting with surrounding mm -hmm. property owners or residents or whatever to make them aware mm -hmm. of projects that are going on and, and for some reason that's rattling around in my head because of some developments in the Briarfield subdivision. And I, I don't know if I remember correctly, but the point I'm trying to make is I think if the, if the developer <clears throat> or, the, or the attorneys and the residents sat down, and I know at some point they probably would have come to an impasse, but at least they, they might have resolved some of these things in a more timely manner. Mm -hmm. But I would think that developers would do that as a courtesy. Mm -hmm. Just to me, if you're going to put an apartment complex next to my home or in my neighborhood, whether it's zoned appropriately or you're asking for a zone change, it'd be nice to meet with the neighbors and say, here's what we're looking to do. Mm -hmm. Here's how it will affect you. What are your concerns? And maybe we can address some of those current uh, uh, concerns up front it's just that's my only comment thank you thank you final call for any other last comments call for the question all in favor those opposed and i will abstain motion carries you need the count or you got it you got it okay move on to the next uh item b <clears throat> Ordinance for a change in zoning district classification involving 18 parcels of land from regional business to plan development infill district and master plan for lots 9 through 26 of Covet Business Park subdivision. Thank you. Uh, this was motioned by Mr. Gines, seconded by Ms. Newman. Mr. Gines. Yeah, I think this is going to be a great, great asset to the community, and we have no objection to it. Thank you, Mr. Gines. Ms. Newman. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, Peter, this is uh, between uh, the seafood place back down Cobb Street. That's, that's all the empty land in between there. South of uh, Quality Seafood to uh, Hathaway. Shaughnessy Printing. Mm -hmm. So that's empty lot. Yes, sir. And you get, it's going to be both sides of the street. It's all going to front Cobb Street. It's one side. It, it's one side. I think the parking is in the rear. Uh, off of Anglada. Uh, Bell, for y'all have a picture or anything? Do I? I think they've got a site plan if you wanted to see that. No, I was just asking that question how you were setting it up. Yeah. I believe they're fronting, uh, they're going to be fronting Covet. They are uh, kind of shotgun style with driveways off off of uh, Anglada. So they're all going to be individual cottages, yeah. not duplexes. Or anything. Everything going to be individual. I think they're all individual, but you know I'm not the designer. Let me. Correct. Uh, Jack Schmidt with Machado Botano, 918 Howard Avenue. Uh, yes, sir. These will be um, 
eight residences. Um, as we mentioned, they will face Kybet Street, but there will be access from the rear on Angolotta. Um, you know, obviously that's a one-way street, so they'll turn in off um, just north of Quality and then turn, take a right, and then they'll have rear access to the residences on Angolotta. Right. Thank you. Okay. All right. Anyone else? One other question. There's enough. Uh, there's enough room or pavement in the width of some of those lots for two cars to park behind these yes, residences. Sir. Yes, sir. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other discussion? There being none, call for the question. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries unanimous. Move on to item C. Resolution granting a relocation of a 15 foot wide utility easement for 1252 and 1254 Beach Boulevard. All right. This is a substitute uh, resolution. The chair will entertain a motion. What? Oh, I'm sorry. This was moved, although it is a substitute. It was moved by Mr. Lawrence, seconded by who? Seconded by Mr. Tisdale. Mr. Lawrence. What are we doing here? What, we were paying this property for the, the new builders that's so concerned about the citizens or what? We're just relocating the easement on the property. There was an easement. If you look at the drawing, there's an easement that's more southerly that just kind of ends about three quarters of the way through the prop property to the west. And actually, uh, there is a line, uh, sewer line, I believe, that runs through the middle of the property, which is the new line that's on your, your packet there. So all we're doing, uh, the owner is allowing us to relocate that old easement to the new easement line. That's all this is. And what, what are you connecting, Jerry? What do you said you're connecting? This water sewer, what? Yeah, I believe it, it's, is it sewer, Peter, that runs across that line, the easement? Uh, Mr. Rohde would know for sure, but I'm pretty sure it's a sewer easement. Yeah. Yeah, it's a sewer it, easement. Mm -hmm. And so then you, you dump it into where? We have a tank we dump it into, or we move it from the middle? Or are you connecting it to what? We're vacating. We're vacating the old easement that came into the property and just ended. Got that. That's going to go away, and this one runs all the way across the property. And there's already the lines are already in there now. So basically, what this is is kind of a housekeeping thing to move the easement line to where the utilities actually cross the property. That's what this is. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Mr. Tisdale? Uh, nothing. Thank you. Anyone else have anything? All in favor? Those opposed? Motion carries. Unanimous. Need a motion on the consent agenda? So moved. Moved by Mr. Tisdale. Seconded by Mr. Gines. Mr. Tisdale? Nothing. Thank you. Mr. Gines? Mr. Lawrence? We don't have a whole lot to discuss here today. Not much. That's not right. <laughs> <laughs> That's not right. <laughs> don't let that stop you. Jerry. Let me see if I can make up something. No, that's all right. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have a ribbon? All right. Ms. Newman? <clears throat> Just a second. Ribbon. <laughs> Mr. Deming? Okay. Mr. Barrett? And I have none. All in favor? Opposed? Any exceptions? Motion carries. Move on to code enforcement hearings. We'll go ahead and open those up. <laughs> Item A on the agenda, A&J Mini Mart LLC, 270 Iberville Drive. Uh, this property is still in violation, but I'd, I'd like to ask for 30 days. They have made some progress on it. We'd All right. Okay. Move, move by Mr. Guys. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Lawrence. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries 30 days. Okay. Next. Item B, Gulf States uh, of Association of Seventh-day Adventist, 12636 Lorraine Road. This property is still in violation. Anyone here to speak on behalf of Gulf States of Association of Seventh-day Ad? There being no one to 
case is closed. Item C, Gloria J. Camp, 235 Bowen Street. This property is still in violation. I want to uh, move. Um, I want to move 30 days on that. She had. Um, I see Barbara. She's in the back. She just lost her mother, and they had uh, a few things going on. So um, I want to do a 30-day extension. Motion by Mr. Gines, seconded by Mr. Lawrence for 30 days. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries. Next. I, item D, Chow Min Lee, 1703 Ridgeway Drive. This property has been resolved. Item E, Jasmine Wynn, 191 Holly Street. This property is still in violation. You said 191 Bone Street? 191 Holly. Holly, okay. Holly Street. All right. When you look at the house from a distance, it doesn't look that bad, but I had my inspectors go through it with the owner. There being no one, this case is closed. Item F, Pantheon Investments, LLC, 212 Raynor Street. This property is still in violation. All right. I, I know that guy. Uh, give me thir let me have 30 days. I'm going to give him a phone call. Um, All right. Motion by Mr. Gines. Second. Second by uh, Mr. Lawrence. Any discussion? All in favor? Those opposed? Motion carries for 30 days. <laughs> Next item. item. G uh, Mark Cameron Wack, 356 McDonald Avenue. This case has been resolved. All right. Code enforcement hearing is now closed. Routine agenda. So moved. Moved by Mr. Gines. I have a second. Second. Uh, second. Second by Mr. Barrett. Mr. Gines. Mr. Gines. Oh, I don't have nothing. All right, Mr. Barrett. Mr. Lawrence. <laughs> uh, the mayor. Uh, he's back there. Yeah, he's back in. The, he's back there. Two point five. Walt, things must be bad. You don't have a tie or anything on today. What's a bad week? So, sorry, I was <clears throat> unable to attend our last meeting, but uh, <clears throat> currently we do have that 2.5 million. It's in the uh, step four or five queue with MEMA, which means we should have it here in the next 10 to 12 business days. All right. I mean, we right on, right on the money, staying on top of it. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Anyone else have anything to add? Call for the question. All in favor of the team? Those opposed? Motion carries unanimous. Entertain a motion to recess. So moved. Mr. I moved. Second. All right, Mr. Tisdale, seconded by Mr. Gines. All in favor? We stand in recess. No, we made it out of here. Alive.